The Stromberg kit comes with the star plates, the carriage bolts, nuts, washers, and instructions. Our miter saw that we borrowed from my good friend. I'm gonna make sure you set it at 35 degrees. That's what all of your boards are going to be cut at. With a star plate system, you cut all of your boards the exact same length. And it doesn't matter what length the board is. We started with eight foot boards. That makes a pretty good size greenhouse, but it can be scaled to any size board you want as long as they are all the same length. You cut both ends of the board so that you end up with a short edge of the board and a long edge and both of the angles are facing inward towards each other at 35 degrees. Next, you can either score or mark where the holes go an inch and a half into the board on the short side. Then you simply drill your holes and you hammer your carriage bolts in. The actual greenhouse requires the use of 25 two by fours. We ended up purchasing five extra and also cutting them at a 35 degree angle just so that we could use them for a base layer. That way, if um, you know having ground contact, they start to wear away, we can simply pull them out and replace them instead of having to completely start over with the greenhouse. This also allowed us the opportunity to space it out, position it exactly where we wanted it to go. And then we simply started assembling the boards right on top. You have your boards with the carriage bolts through them, and then you simply take one star plate at a time and start assembling them. The angles are all exactly the same. Simply take your socket wrench and tighten everything down. To begin assembling the sides, you take two boards and first attach a star plate system at their junction. And then you lay them on the base and you simply screw them in. This makes it a lot easier than assembling them one at a time. This is the last side of the main part of the greenhouse going up. And next we'll get started on the cross beams for support. To put the roof up, you can certainly assemble all five points and lift it up all at once to attach it, but since there are only two of us and this is going to be pretty high, we decided to start with two boards being attached and then we added each of the remaining three. And even though it looks a bit flimsy as it's going up, it feels incredibly stable as soon as you get a couple of those ceiling boards attached.
Attaching the plastic was the most time consuming and frustrating part of this entire project. And unfortunately we didn't get a lot of good video of it. But as I said at the beginning, we started with rolls of six mil plastic. They were 10 feet by 25 feet. We unrolled them, we draped them over the entirety of the greenhouse as you can see here. And then we started at the top. We started with just one of the boards um, attaching it one at a time. You wanna make sure you pull your plastic really tight from one board to the next. You don't want to have any sagging in the plastic at all or else it could cave in. So you just take your time stapling one, stapling the plastic into one board and working your way all the way around and then pulling it down and tightening it that way. Before I could finish the plastic, I wanted to create the doorway and they do include some templates and ideas for doorways, but I did not one, want one that opened downward. So I basically just created this on my own. It's about 24 inches across and about 63 inches tall with some bracers at the bottom so that it didn't cave in or move at all. Then I simply wrapped the plastic all the way around into the inside of the doorway and stapled it there. And the doorway is held in place with a few of these mending plates that I had laying around. To finish the plastic, you're gonna go all along the bottom, attaching it the same way as you did at the top with um, about a million staples. And by the end of this, if you have any kind of mobility left in your wrist, then you're a lucky individual. But you're just going to pull it as tightly as you can, staple all along the bottom, and then simply take some shears and trim the excess plastic off. To build the door, I also used 2x4 pressure treated wood. I measured the inside of the door frame and subtracted half an inch in each direction, cut the wood, assembled it with a cross beam for support, wood glue and screws, wrapped it in plastic, attached hinges, a handle and a latch, and simply put the whole thing together. Well, here's the greenhouse. There is still a little bit of finishing work to be done at the seams. Plan on taking some duct tape and duct taping along the seams just to add an extra layer of uh, protection. But it's rainy and wet out here today, so we can't do that. Here's inside this beautiful geodesic greenhouse. And of course it is muddy and gross, but Seems to be watertight. I don't see water leaking in anywhere. Um, as you can see, as alluded by the boards sitting in here, I will be building some garden beds to be growing food in here year round. And I will do an instructional video and show you exactly what angles you should cut the boards at and the lengths that go with the eight foot boards, which is what we used in here when we were building. And I'll also be moving my potting bench and a couple of seed starting shelves out here. And I will do an an another video when all of that's done. And we'll be adding in some vents because this is a greenhouse. It gets very hot. It will need to be able to be vented. And I'm going to use those corners right there to create little venting windows. Just to show you, it is about 11 o'clock, so it has warmed up. It's almost 60 degrees in here. Outside, it's about 45 degrees right now, so you can see it's definitely warmer here in the greenhouse. So that's the update so far. I will add more as I add more.